What's up y'all, it's your girl Miss Jenny B and we are back with another Ball Alert review. Today, I'm gonna be reviewing the first episode of season three of John Singleton's Snowfall, which comes on FX on Wednesday nights at 10. Last night, they aired the season premiere, which was called Protect and Swerve. But something's changing in a big way. First, it like started off with previewing everything from last season, basically everything that had to do with Lucia, Gustavo, Franklin, and um, Teddy. So in this season, it starts off, well first let me just say, if you haven't seen season one and season two, you should do that before you watch this video because it's gonna be filled with spoiler alerts. If you haven't seen season three, episode one, then you should watch that before you watch this. Also because, again, it's gonna have spoiler alerts. So, let's get into it. Episode one starts off with Officer Roy, which is the father of Franklin's ex-boo. But he told her to stay, he told him to stay away from her because she's on the right track and he's the biggest drug dealer in LA, okay? So, what happened? So it starts off with Officer Roy looking at like LA and seeing how everything has changed. Um, I'm not sure right now if it's for the better or worse. I mean, if he thinks it's for the better or, the, or worse, but he's looking around and he sees everything's changing. And um, once he turns the corner, it's like the crackhead is like trying to steal crack from inside the dude's car. And the officer sees it. So he's like running down, trying to catch him. The guy runs off and the lady's hanging out of the car. And obviously the police officer thinks that there's something wrong. And so he's going after the car to get the late, to get the guy who's like having the lady hanging out the window. And then the lady falls out the window. And then once he runs up to her, he sees that she's just literally taking a puff from the crack, the joint, and then she's fine. And so that's when he realizes that got in real in LA, you know? All right, so then, after that, then they show the snowfall intro and all this other stuff. So then they go to Jerome and, and basically they just build up all of the storyline. So it starts with the Officer Roy storyline and then they show the Jerome storyline, which he just opened his own, I guess it's an electronic shop. I don't even know what kind of shop it is. It seems like it's an electronic shop because I think they said they're gonna be bigger than Radio Shack or something. Something old, like I don't think even Radio Shack exists anymore. But anyway, so I think it's an electronic store. So they build the storyline for that. Then they go to Leon and they show that he is the HNIC in charge, okay? He's getting like a haircut and telling people, he got a bodyguard and everything. So then they show him. Then they go to Franklin and his mom. They had built a better relationship after he got out of jail last season. And she, fought, she saw him with, after he got beat up. So they're close now. She's like trying to buy buildings and he's her partner and all this other stuff. So they have a be the better relationship. All of the, they have all truths. Like they don't keep nothing from each other. So that's how like the first 10 minutes started out. Basically telling you where everybody is right now. Franklin is living in the mansion. He visits his mom every now and then to talk business and stuff like that. They have the crack house where they cook the crack. They go to Jerome's house also. So this is like, there's like five different storylines going on. All right, you following me now? Episode goes on then we see that there's these three guys that are working for this new drug dealer in the game or this new crew mem crew leader, whatever, in LA. And he's, his name is Man Boy. <laughs> And these three dudes are working for him and they're like scoping the projects, the areas that Franklin has took over already. Oh, I forgot to mention Teddy, his storyline also with his pilot. Um, he's like about to break into some new ground with Mexico, not even drug business. It's like the Mexican guy wants him to start a business with him, a club business and they're working with Lorena still, who is the CI, the FB, no, she's DEA, and Teddy is former CIA. Okay, if you watch the show, hopefully you're following me. If you don't, you're probably really confused, and hopefully this makes you wanna watch, even though I said to watch before you watch this, but anyway. So then, um, so yeah, so that was Teddy. So that's like six storylines right there. Um, so then as it's moving on, Jerome has his opening 
and um, everybody's there, even Franklin's ex. I forgot her name, but I'm gonna have, I, I'm gonna put her name, her name's gonna be somewhere over here. So Franklin's ex is there, he goes up to her and he's talking to her all smooth and stuff. He's like, hey, look at you, whatever. And they're talking, he gives her a wad of cash, talking about it's a graduation gift. And she's like, oh, I can't accept this or whatever. So, and remember, like their her dad doesn't want them to talk. He told her, he told Franklin like hella times to stay away from my daughter, don't even like look at her. But clearly neither of them listen, they're hard headed. How it went down was that Franklin, um, so they, so then while they were there at the um, opening, Jerome wanted to take a picture, so they all went outside. And then the girl's dad drove by in her, his cop car, just like scoping the area because obviously he has like a vendetta against Franklin because he told them to stay away from each other since they were kids. I think they were like neighbors. I don't know if they were next door, but they're like, I think they might've been next door neighbors, like to his mom's, Franklin's mom's house. So they grew up together, whatever, but he went the wrong path and she's going to college. So, you know, how dads be. So then the girl went home and the night after the event, she went home and her dad was sitting at the table and she thought that like she was gonna be in trouble for like staying out late or whatever. And turns out he was like, oh, I don't wanna fight with you because like you're about to go away to college blah 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 so then um they're talking he kind of like eases it in he's like asking about franklin oh i heard jerome um opened his new shop and she's like oh are you serious like you just called me in here or come to press me about franklin and i told you i wasn't there or she lied all like about her night whatever and i don't know if he knew that she was there because he drove by and she was outside i don't know if he like actually saw her but he mentioned it as if she he knew that she was there but i don't know if he, i don't know if she knew that he knew he was there or if he even knew so whatever i guess we'll find out like in the next episodes this is just episode one so much happened like literally so much happened so then after that then we see like these three dudes um who work for the other crew in la they're like scoping out the area and they're like oh man boy told us to just scope it out but the two guys in the like there's two guys in the front and there's one in the back two guys in the front they pull out guns um, they're like, they told us to scope out the area and then they see Franklin's um, ice cream truck, which is where what they use to sell drugs in the project. So I, Franklin's ice cream truck pulls up and um, they're like, oh, we should just go rob it. And then the guy in the back, he's like, no, man boy told us to just scope it out. And then the people in the front, they're like, they told us to scope it out so that we can rob them, duh. So then they get out to try to rob, um, rob the truck. And I just wanna say, like, pause it right here. I interviewed Isaiah John like a couple of weeks back about Snowfall and I asked him, what can we expect from your character? And this man told me, whoo, a lot of bodies, <laughs> a lot of bodies. <laughs> and when I was watching it yesterday, it's like, he was not lying. So the, the dudes, the two dudes go to try to rob the truck and Leon, who is played by Isaiah John, shoots him right in the head, first, shoots the first guy right in the head. The second guy sees, he's like, oh, and tries to run, but then he gets shot too. So now it's just the third guy left in a truck, I mean, in the car that they drove up in, and now he got to drive away. Now he's the getaway driver and they're shooting at the car. So Leon and, I, I don't remember who was with Leon, but Leon takes the information back to Franklin and Jerome and Louis, which is the aunt. And um, Franklin is like, okay, I want to know who exactly it was. So then in the next exact scene, the next scene, they tell us who is like telling them where Franklin's truck is. Cause obviously this is privileged inf information to know where you about to put your drops at and stuff like that. So they're like, he, want, he he's like, I want to know exactly who it is. So then the next scene, they show us that it's freaking Leon's ex-girlfriend. And what's crazy is in that same interview with Isaiah John, I asked him about bros before hoes because last season, he, Franklin told him to drop his ex-girlfriend because she became a crack addict. She was, he like let her learn how to cook the crack and she started taking it. You're not supposed to take your own product. Like <laughs> she started being on the crack. So she became a crackhead. 
And Franklin's like, you gotta ditch her. But then he loved her so much, so he kept her around and like just took her to this um, other house that they have on, that they purchased with their money. So they took her to this abandoned house and he locked her to the sink so he could keep her like under wraps and not doing crack so that she could like sober up pretty much. But of course she's going through withdrawal. And then at the end of last, this is last season that I'm talking about, last season. So at the end, basically she like escapes and they can't find her. He went to go get her something to eat. She escapes and then we don't hear from her for the rest of the season. So then now this girl is freaking a crackhead for real, working with the damn other crew, man boy and them, telling them how to cook the crack, telling them where Franklin's crew is about to be, all this stuff while being on crack. So they're using her. I'm sure she's gonna end up dead. And once they either by the man boys crew or Leon or Franklin, because they're getting bodies for real. Back in the day, like season one, season two, Franklin was against like killing people for no reason. Now they're like catching so many bodies. But anyway, I digress. Moving on. So we find out that it's Leon's ex-girlfriend that's giving man boy all the information. So man boy comes to Franklin's cookhouse to like give him a deal. He's like, oh, since one, two of my boys are dead already and you didn't lose anything because Leon got to them before they even got to the truck, then like, let's have a deal. Um, I'll give you the driver that was driving the car that night and we could have a partnership and basically sling crack all over LA. So he's like, Franklin is like, all right, well, in two, 24 hours, either you and all your boys will be dead or that driver will be dead and we'll be in business. So you'll find out in 24 hours. That was crazy. That was so gangster, honestly. But anyway, so that passed. The next scene, it goes back to Teddy and um, Franklin is like asking, he's like asking Teddy like, yo, what's up? Like after he just got jacked, well, almost got jacked. So he knows people are onto him. So he's like, what's going on? He's like, and then the dude was late too. And this guy is CIA. If y'all remember, Teddy is CIA. He calls him Reed Thompson because obviously Franklin is not supposed to know that he's CIA working with the DIA, which is Lorena. And I think Franklin knows that Lorena is DEA, DEA though from when the Lucia and Gustavo stuff was happening. So Franklin and Teddy talk and Franklin accidentally spills a little bit of tea that like he's not supposed to basically letting him know that he knows that he's CIA. He found out last season that he was in the government. So this season he's like talking to him and he like says too many words and um, because the Teddy was trying to increase the price. He's like they're going up 15, either 15 or 50 percent. I couldn't really understand what they were saying, but the price was going up and plus they ran out of, of coke so they couldn't give it to him. He couldn't give it to him right away so they had to wait. So Teddy is giving him the coke and then Franklin is making it into crack to sell to everybody, which obviously once you cook it down, it's less pure. You make more, make more of it, blah, 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 whatever. While Teddy's telling him like basically the DEA is like cracking down on all of the narcotics and all of the drugs. And then Franklin's like, I thought you was above all of that. Like I thought you was immune to that. He's like, what would make you think I'm immune? Now Teddy might know a little bit that Franklin knows that he's in, he's the feds. But this is literally just the beginning. It's so much, like I feel like I'm saying so much, but it's just because on the opening episode, the premiere episode, obviously you got to tell or start the stories of everybody, you know? So that happened. So Franklin, now Franklin knows he said a little bit too much. So he told his mom, he's like a little bit like nervous about what could happen. Like clearly Teddy's the one that got him out of jail. Teddy is the one who's protecting him from the government but he's also ha Franklin also has to work for him like he has to push the product for them but at the end of the day they like Teddy and Lorena are still trying to get everybody that they have involved taken to jail in the, at the end of the day as all of these stories are unfolding then it's like then it goes to freaking Claudia so it wasn't even one day and Jerome's freaking store gets ransacked and broken into like the day after the opening it gets ransacked and broken into and um louis finds out franklin's aunt finds out that it was claudia and if you remember claudia from 
previous seasons, she's the one that Louis was sleeping with to get the coke in the beginning. And then they broke it off and then Louis bashed her head. They got into a fight, she bashed her head and knocked her out, but she obviously survived. So Louis went to see Claudia to tell her to like, chill out, stop, don't, like, I know you're mad about the fight and like, I'm sorry it went down like that, but you need to let it go. Like, you don't need to be coming at Jerome, don't need to be ransacking his, um, bi his business because of what happened between me and you. So then the girl, so Claudia like lets her in, she gets in the bath, they're talking, and then she is about to do some heroin. And she tells Louis to come in and join her or whatever. And that's how the scene ends. So now I was thinking that Louis was about to be on some heroin up in there. But then in the next scene, Officer Roy comes back and takes Franklin on a ride along. Franklin is trying to convince him like, you need to stop working for the man and you need to like let it go and start working for the streets and with your people, the people that you are, are claiming to serve and protect, you need to start working for and with them, you know? Officer Roy tells him that he had, he hustled before, like that's not the way that he wants to be and because he couldn't sleep at night. Like, it's like you did all of this, you you're making all of this money and you're hustling, you doing well for yourself, but at the end of the day, you can't sleep at night because your conscience is all jacked up because of what you're putting into your own community. You know what I'm saying? So, and that, this part was on the trailer. So he's like, so how do you sleep, Franklin? I know this is like, he, this man is the biggest crack dealer in LA right now. He's like, how are you sleeping? And then Franklin's like, I'm sleeping like a baby. <laughs> like, what? Basically the officer was like, it's all gonna come back it's all gonna come back to you because it's like, all right, you have a mansion, you have all of this stuff, you have all this money, but look at what you're doing to the community. So he, after the ride along, he lets him out in front of a crack house and all Franklin sees is a bunch of crackheads and a crackhead with a baby. And now he's left to deal with like, oh, is it like, I have all of these things, but really is it worth it to tear down my community that I claim to love and want to be doing stuff for? So that's pretty much the whole episode, which was freaking crazy. Oh, and so while during that conversation, he also said, um, the officer also promised, like after he said he sleeps like a baby, it's like his ego got in the way of everything. So the officer was like, like, I want to let you know that I'm like, he said it's war. So basically I'm on your ass. Like, I'm coming for you. He was like, all of the mistakes you're making. And while he was saying that, it was like cutting to um, Leon shooting the driver. And then it was like cutting, he was like, I'm gonna I'm get your friends, your uncle, your aunt, your mom. And then it was cut into all of these different scenes. So first it cut to Leon shooting the driver. Then it cut to Louis, the aunt, coming back from her, her night with Claudia after the heroin. So it makes it seem like she didn't kill Cla Claudia made her overdose or something because she crying then she came in and hugged Jerome and then it showed Franklin's mom who was like doing like counting numbers and doing bills or something like that which I'm assuming they're buying the building from the beginning to like funnel the money and clean it and stuff like that I don't know I might be thinking ahead I don't know you never know because it's still season episode one so that was pretty much the episode and it was crazy so I hope you enjoyed this review and I can't wait till next week Drop your comments down below. I'm Jenny B and this is your Bottle Alert Review.